Hey guys, Michael Ponzo here. Today we're going to talk about how to properly smoke a short rib. We're going to go through start to finish on it and, and we're going to talk about my six steps for smoking a short rib to get you that really competition awesome style, to get you a short rib that looks like the pictures on Instagram that you're trying to hit. Six basic steps we're going to cover. We're going to talk about trimming the meat, seasoning the meat, um, smoking the meat, wrapping the meat, resting the meat. We're going to talk about all the different steps. Go start to finish all the way through. We're going to talk about wood selections, different types of smokers, long bones, short bones. I want to make sure I hit every single point in this video so that when you leave here, you're ready to do some knockout killer smoked short ribs. Look at that. Pull it nice and tight. Now let's talk about short ribs because I love smoked short ribs. I actually like them better than brisket. And I know a lot of people would be like, hey, take it easy. But uh, <laughs> short ribs are unbelievable. So the brisket is up near the front part of the cow, uh, underneath the front shoulder. And it carries a lot of movement. And it's called a motion muscle. And what a motion muscle is, is it's used for just heavy moving. Basically, you think it's pulling this cow around everywhere. So there's not a lot of intramuscular fat. It's very lean. You have between the fat, between the flap and the point, there's some really big chunks of meat, and as the brisket cooks down properly, it bastes the inside of the meat. Absolutely fantastic. The shore rib is right below it under the belly on the plate. And what that is, that's a little bit closer to, say, the baking cut of the ribs, you know, if you were using a pig. And that is also technically a motion muscle, but not to the extent because there's a lot of intramuscular fat marbling inside the shore rib. Completely changes the way it cooks. Gives you a lot better of a smoked beef texture, that kind of succulent, juicy, uh, all around just amazing meat that you want to hit uh, and a lot more room for error versus a brisket. So I love smoking short ribs. I, I do it all the time. I do it in a ton of different recipes, bone in, boneless, long bone, short bone, Korean style, I mean, all sorts of different ways. So tell me though, what do you guys like? Do you like brisket better or short ribs better? Because me, I'm a, I'm a short rib guy. And if you've ever been to Louis Miller barbecue and had their short rib, I think you'd see why unbelievable stuff. I mean, just it, it was incredible. Best piece of smoked beef I've ever eaten. So next question is, what are we smoking on today, right? And and honestly, wood is so um, dependent on what your flavor profile is. You know, I'm in Illinois, so I'm going to smoke on oak. I love oak. Uh, I'm going to smoke some post oak up here. Uh, it, but, you know, whether it's hickory, whether it's uh, applewood, whether it's a cherry pecan mix, whatever, anything you want to do, it's completely up to you. It's your flavor profile. I will tell you that Fruit woods don't necessarily work as good with beef because they don't stand up very well. But something like mesquite, which could be misused, would definitely ruin your beautiful beef. So you know you got to be careful with your wood selection, but it's got to be what works for you and what you can stand behind and be proud of. And I'm going to put up, I'm going to create a whole other video about wood selection and smoking and, and fire management. So we'll get to that in the future. Let's get into these steps. So let's talk about choosing the meat, right? What are you looking for in it? You want to have a nice cap of meat on top. You want to see some beautiful little marbling in there. In a perfect world, you'd have very little to no sinew and fat to save you some work, but we're going to trim it off later if you have some. When you're looking for bone and short ribs, don't expect to see a giant fat cap of meat on top um, because what happens is as the short rib cooks, that thinner kind of strap of meat starts to pull away from the bone and come together and gets really thick. So uh, it can be deceiving when you buy short rib, um, bone and short ribs because it looks like there's not a lot of meat, but once they cook, you'll see there's actually quite a bit. And you'll be able to get a good look at that because I'm going to show you as I'm trimming them up in a minute. Trimming the short ribs is super important. And uh, the reason is there's a few different steps you want to take with it, but you want to get that sinew off. The more time you spend pre-prepping your meat, the better your end product's going to be. And those little efforts, those little constant efforts of, of seasoning properly and trimming, make sure you're getting all the sinew off. And and getting the bad fat off and pulling the um, pulling the sinew off the back of the bone. Those things right now are kind of tedious, but those few extra minutes you spend will be the difference between good and phenomenal. So make sure you do that. Watch these steps. You're going to see how we trim through the sinew right here, uh, get any other bad fat off. This right here is good fat, though. You want to keep that good, white, hard, crumbly fat because that's going to base the short rib beautifully. But the more fat and the more junk that's on top of your short rib, is going to keep, it's going to grab your bark, and then that's not actually going to penetrate to the meat well. And later, when you're kind of scraping that off with a fork, you're going to be eating pieces of beef that have no bark and much less of a smoke grab. So you want to make sure you do the work ahead of time and actually uh, get that set up. On to the next step, seasoning. And seasoning is everything, right? And <laughs> any barbecue form you go on, I'm on barbecue forms all the time because I am obsessed with barbecue. Um, any form you go on, it, the people are going to talk about uh, uh, 
SPOG, right? Salt, pepper, onion, garlic, or just salt and pepper, or I do some fancy rub with ancho chili and espresso. And you know, there's there's a million different ways to do it. And honestly, it's up to you. It's up to what flavor you want to give to your short rib. And that's a big important thing, right? But I actually use um, a rub that I learned in Texas, actually, this place. I know I mentioned it once already, but uh, it was that good. The Louis Miller 9 1 um, pepper to salt ratio, where nine parts by volume pepper, one part by volume salt. And I love it because it's simple, it's clean, it allows the smoke flavor to come through. Um, so I use that when I'm smoking briskets, I use it when I'm smoking short ribs. It's just an absolutely incredible product. When you're seasoning your short rib, you want to make sure that you're not seasoning very close to the short rib because that's what's going to hurt it. That's what's going to mess it up because the closer you are to the short rib, the little pockets of seasoning you get, the little mounds of seasoning, you're not going to have a nice even blanket of seasoning all the way through. And that's really going to affect the way it eats because... Yeah, we're putting a lot of pepper on this, but on top of that pepper, no one wants to get a mouthful of a chunk of pepper. So I like to do it from a higher angle up. You, you do a little snowflake, uh, not as drastic as the Salt Bay guy, um, but, but you know, from a high enough thing where it can kind of, as it falls, it disperses over the meat evenly. And then I do it on a tray. And doing it on a tray means that any residual seasoning that, that we're getting is going to get kind of ca- gathered on that tray, and then you can take your short rib dab it along, or if you have more to season, knock it off that tray and use them on the next one because, I mean, let's face it, seasoning costs money. We want to make sure we're consistent. We get on all the sides of the meat as well as the bottom of the bone, but we're not looking for a giant, heavy caked on layer. We just want a nice, even, like that first snowfall, that that very light, um, light just kind of frost over the meat and make sure that it's even on there. And that's going to take it over the top because remember, that meat is going to shrink as it cooks. So whatever you have on there is just going to become more fortified as more fat cooks out, as more moisture cooks out of the meat. Now, after we season, we want to do what's called curing the meat. And by curing the meat, we're just going to leave it out. I'm going to leave it out. I'm going to throw a sheet of plastic on top, let it sit for about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, these aren't very thick cuts, so I don't have to worry about you know the, the seasoning penetrating for too long. But what I am looking for is that, um, that reaction to happen where, where the pellicle starts to form. So I want to see the salt actually pull some moisture out of the meat when it does that, the, the moisture is going to be reabsorbed back into the meat uh, and create kind of this gel on the top. It's just this really funky kind of slime. That stuff is incredible because that's what grabs the smoke initially, and that's what then takes that and starts the bark formation. It starts the caramelization where that blood, all the sugars in the blood start to caramelize, and you get that really amazing dark Texas meat, and that's what we're looking for. So the curing is extremely important. You can season it and throw it right on and think to yourself, oh, it's going to be on there for hours, but... You will see a giant difference in the way your food eats if you take the time to properly cure it. I season my ribs 45 minutes ahead of time. If I'm doing briskets, I season them six to seven hours ahead of time. It all depends on what you know, how thick the meat is, what the what the level of smoke it's going to get is. So what's in the actual cure uh, in the seasoning mix? So there's a lot of variables, but for this, an hour and a half works really well for me for the short ribs. Now I'm going into the smoker and. I mean, I smoke on all different kinds of smokers. I have a rotisserie offset. I have an offset uh, traditional one. Today, what I'm smoking these guys on is a Fast Eddie smoker by Cook Shack. This is a pellet smoker. I know what you're thinking, a pellet smoker, you know, fine. But uh, I don't have a a pencil mustache, and I am, for the purpose of this video, 23 stories up in a high rise in downtown Chicago. So this is what I have to work with. And honestly, pellet smokers are great. If that's what works for you and that's a flavor you want, use it. It's fantastic. And this, this method, though, that I'm going to show you, all these different steps work exactly the same, whether you're in a pellet smoker, a hardwood smoker, a charcoal smoker, a kettle smoker, makes no difference. The steps are the same, seasoning, trimming, smoking, temperature, time, all that. Uh, the only difference is there's no fire management with this because it's doing it itself. So um, this smoker is great, though. Uh, I'm using, actually, I'm using Traeger wood pellets for this one. I like the Traeger pellets for this smoker because... Any other off-brand besides the actual Cook Shack smokers and the selections, I feel like they don't give as great of a of a smoke grab as I would love. Um, all the other pellets are too big, and then the machine starts to clog up, and then I have flares. The trigger ones kind of go through nice and smooth. I'll put you know descriptions down below uh, on all this of you know um, what kind of pellets I'm using, what kind of smoker, all that. I'll leave it down in the comment section. But guys, I want to hear about what kind of smoker you're using, and tell me. I mean, is this informative so far? If you like it so far. You know, hit the like button. I'd love that. Hit the subscribe button. I got a lot more videos coming out and a lot of content. It is all food all the time on this channel. We've been through my smoker setup. You know, like I said, I want to hear about your guys' smoker setup. I want to hear what kind you're using and why you love it or why you hate it, honestly. I mean, this is a great forum for discussion. Um, but I'm going to start actually getting them in the smoker. So I've taken these these short ribs and I've cured them. 
in terms of the you know hour hour and a half seasoning time and now they're going in the smoker and the smoker set at 230 degrees and i'm just gonna let this go and i actually don't wrap these during the smoke because i like to get that bark formation and in the pellet smoker it seems to be a very moist environment so i i actually just keep them i, I wrap almost nothing in this smoker for that reason uh but if i'm doing them in say you know um in a yoder smoker or anything like that where it is a little bit of a drier environment i'll either add a water pan or i'll wrap at one point let's take a look at these now so the the, the short ribs have been smoking for about one hour and you can see that the bark formation is starting to happen they've definitely changed color obviously i mean they're in a hot environment but you can start to see how it starts to gray out a little bit and it's starting to get starting to shrink and pull away from the bone slightly they're looking great they're on great track on our two and a half and this is a little bit different because two and a half now we're starting to see some serious bark formation and at the bark formation now this is a really good chance to check you know is my smoker running too dry is it running too hot and you can start by feeling on the bark and if you start to see some really crunchy pieces grab a spray bottle of water and just give it a little spritz or put a pan of water into the actual smoker with them that steam actually helps quite a bit now our five is looking fantastic we're at 203 degrees internally on these guys uh, I like to take them between 202 and 204. Um, I'm going to actually let them take them off. And now we're going to go into the final steps. And in my opinion, the absolutely most important steps when it comes to smoking meat, the wrapping and the resting. So when I'm wrapping briskets, when I'm wrapping ribs, when I'm wrapping short ribs, uh, honestly, pork butts, I use heavy, heavy, heavy layers of, of plastic. And I just started using this like a year ago. Um, I had never seen it before. I was always, oh, no, we wrap it in butcher paper good to go or we wrap it in foil if we're doing ribs or anything like that but I was um, learning how to smoke Texas beef in, in an actual smokehouse and working with a pit master and we were talking back and forth and he said yeah you wrap it in just a ton and a ton and a ton of plastic and I said well well why it doesn't make any sense and he showed me he, he showed me one that we fresh wrapped and it had a puddle of juice on the bottom because remember that muscles tight right right when you take it out of a smoker it might feel a little jiggly but it's very tight and as it starts to rest those proteins start to relax well all that juice that's sitting in that pool if you don't keep it tight to the meat near the meat it's not going to reabsorb that juice and that's kind of the big issue right where you slice into it and it's a little bit mealy or it's a little bit grainy so in actual wrapping and all this time over and over what that does that locks all those juices in it also helps create more steam it's going to keep that steam moving to help break down any leftover connective tissue any collagen that's in there it's going to break it down and give you just an amazing succulent piece of beef once we wrap this and wrap it and wrap it and wrap it, um, I'll do one of two things. I'll either put it in a hot box turned off or a beer cooler and just kind of let it hang out. Or if I don't have that, I'll wrap it heavily again in butcher paper and some kitchen towels and leave it out on the counter. And I rest these for an hour and a half, two hours. And they're not huge, but they also don't get cold because they're sitting there and they're so well insulated between the plastic and whatever other uh, media I'm using to keep it uh, insulated. So they, they stay hot and... Uh, even if they do get a little bit cold, they've already reabsorbed all their liquid, so you could heat them up nicely. But let's take a look. Now, I have two different ones that we're going to be looking at. Looking at this first short rib, um, it's pretty interesting because I didn't rest this. Yeah, it looks wrapped because I wrapped it, and then I thought, oh, let me show them one that's not rested. So you see how it sliced into it. Now, you feel it. It's got um, a firmer texture, almost like a medium well, medium to medium well kind of steak, right? And when I cut into it, well, there's juices coming out and it looks juicy. It doesn't look succulent. And you can see that there's a lot of resistance when I pull the meat apart. Um, this short rib is done. It just hasn't taken the time to finish the cooking process, which is resting. And you have to look at it as part of the cooking process. Otherwise, it just will not work properly. You will not get that amazing short rib. Now, looking at the second one, this one's rested for two hours. And you can look, I mean, it's got a very jello-like consistency. It feels like a rare steak. And that's because, like I said, the proteins have relaxed. The remaining connective tissue is broken down. All that juice has been reabsorbed. I mean, let's take a look at when we cut into it. You can see, I mean, that is moist. It's succulent. It's almost a different color than the other one. And when we pull it apart, it pulls apart with very minimal resistance. Now, if I like a slightly chewier short rib, I'd smoke it a little bit less. I'd stop it at 196, 195. If I like a little bit more fall apart, I'll take it up to 208, 209. Those differences, they make a huge difference, especially after wrapping and resting. Um, but, you know, what temperature do you guys finish your, your meat at? I'd love to hear what you guys are doing your short ribs at, what you finish them at, because every single person smokes their short ribs different and ends up with great results. It's just a matter of your preference for how far you're taking it. Me, I'm a 204 guy. I like it at 204, 205. 
I've, or I'm sorry, between 202 and 204. I have always done it like that. You know, once I hit certain areas and figured it out, I've gone as early as pulling them at 185 and had that, you know, fork and knife kind of short rib, which was awesome too. There's lots of different ways, but uh, I'd love to see, you know, your guys' short ribs. Let's take a look at a few other ones real quick. So now these, are, I showed you today the six inch uh, cut short ribs, whether it's four inch cut, six inch cut, the process is the same. Now looking at the 12 inch cut short ribs, again, step by step, very much the same. It just take longer to smoke. These take about nine, 10 hours on the smoker sometimes. Um, but the smaller ones, uh, they, they go much quicker. But I mean, look at this thing. Absolutely gorgeous. I am obsessed with taking pictures of 12 inch bone uh, short ribs. They're absolutely incredible. I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear what you're doing on your smokers, what you're making. Um, you know, barbecue is a huge community. Hopefully this helped you through some of those steps, uh, some of those hiccups that you have. So if you like what you see, hit subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'm going to be posting, check out this pork belly uh, Reuben video, what to do with your leftover smoked pork belly. So if you're just smoking things like crazy over the weekend or, or during the week, since we're all home right now anyways, um, here's a great idea, something to do with leftovers and you can keep grilling it. Look at that. Well,